I am reviewing some important equations from equilibrium and elasticity. So first equation we have here is first condition for equilibrium. Uh, according to the first condition of equilibrium for the center of mass of a body at rest to remain at rest, sum of all the forces acting on it should be zero. Look at here, if there are number of forces acting at the same time, suppose that F1, F2 on the system, then sum of these all forces, sum should be equal to zero to have a translational equilibrium. This is said to be the first condition for equilibrium. Okay, so this is the one. And the second condition for equilibrium here is for non-rotating body to remain non-rotating. So this is trans relational equilibrium first one and the second one this one is a condition for non-rotating rotation means fixed axis will be here along um, about this axis object is rotating around this okay uh, if some of all the talks so for example this is an object turning force will be suppose one force is acting downward here and another force is acting in this direction this object these two forces are trying to rotate this object about some axis here okay so this is the turning forces that we call torque if sum of all the turning forces is equal to zero then object will be at equilibrium condition and we can write down this relationship that is summation sum of all the torque turning effect will be zero so this is second condition for equilibrium so these two conditions should be satisfied to have an object in equilibrium position otherwise object will not be in equilibrium position okay so remember first condition summation f sum of all the forces equal to zero and the second condition sum of all the torque should be zero so this is the complete equilibrium condition for an object third equation here is position of center of mass denoted by rcm cm represents the center of mass is given by uh, position vector of individual particles r1 r2 r3 and so on multiplied by mass of the particles let me write down for, for instant here is the center of mass and these are the particles having mass m1 suppose this one and m2 this one m3 m3 this one and so on okay so distance from center of mass is different this is for example this is r3 this one is r1 and another one here is r3 m3 here okay so center of mass will be product of mass of the particles individual particles with their respective position vector r1 plus m2 second mass multiplied by r2 position vector divided by sum of masses of all the particles in this object so this gives you the coordinate or the position vector of center of mass of a system of particles this can be expressed in and uh, this format which is uh, summation m i r i summation of product of mass and position vectors of the corresponding particles divided by sum of masses of all particles that is total mass of this object okay so this is how we can find the uh, position vector of center of mass of a system of particles now let's move to the next equation which is very important Hooke's law according to Hooke's law uh, elastic modulus which is the property of material of body uh, to which it is made which is uh, elastic modulus is equal to uh, stress stress divided by strain so what is stress stress is force divided by uh, area 
that is force per unit area and strain this from here is change in length divided by original length okay when we apply stress on an object it will elongate there will be displacement that we call strain the ratio of change in the um, change in the length to the original length is said to be strain okay so this is this is the formula for finding elastic modulus so based on this definition that is elastic modulus we can find various moduli of elasticity for example young's modulus the first one here uh, this is for tensile uh, force uh, right here young's modulus is denoted by capital y and uh, given by stress tensile is stress divided by tensile strain okay so this all total is tensile stretch and this one is said to be tensile strain because force acting in this case is perpendicular to the surface okay on which we are talking about for example for instance we are taking this type of object suppose rod if we are applying force tangent to this surface this is said to be tensile force right whether it is stretching or squeezing you can pull it or push it okay in both case it could be compression or extending object in both case if force is perpendicular to the surface on which it, it is acting that we call tensile stage and strain produced will be the tensile strain okay okay so the tensile strain stress is given by force perpendicular divided by area the surface area right if force is acting right here the surface area is this one okay area of this surface and uh, this force is tangential uh, I mean uh, per uh, perpendicular to this surface okay so f perpendicular divided by a whole divided by delta l divided by delta um, l naught that means original length is l naught and after applying force its length will be changed that is change in length this is change in length okay this distance so this gives you f perpendicular l naught divided by a area divided by delta l okay so this is the formula for young's modulus second important formula for liquid this is especially for liquid or fluids is the bulk modulus denoted by b and given by negative of delta phi negative sign here introduced because you know when we you put some object in the water what happened is because of the pressure acted upon by uh, liquid the volume will be decreased so negative sign is here so external pressure additional pressure on an object delta p here divided by delta v is change in volume and v naught is this one is original volume original volume when object is not inserted inside the liquid that volume is called original volume uh, now move to the shear modulus if uh, force is applied parallel to the surface look at here force parallel to the surface that means if this is an object if you apply force like parallel to the surface in this direction so what will happen is uh, it will be deformed like this right so this deformation making certain angle here x here and uh, this is height so stress will be a parallel divided by a surface area and strain strain in this case will be x divided by h x is this this one which we call deformation and s is transverse dimension right s is transverse dimension this height actually this height is the transverse dimension and what is x 
the deformation from the original position. So this is the formula. Simplifying, you will get this one. F, par F parallel multiplied by H divided by A multiplied by X, where X is deformation. Okay. And A is area over which force is exerted. And finally, pressure formula. The pressure is simply force, perpendicular force divided by area. The unit of all these uh, modulus, whether it is Young's modulus or shear modulus or bulk modulus, is same, which is Newton per meter square. And also, unit for uh, stress is also same, which is Newton per meter square. And uh, unit of strain is, uh, you know, actually uh, strain is unitless physical quantity.